Hey guys, I'm John Carrick, author of Legacy of a Mad Scientist and The Legend of Ashley Fox, two amazing science fiction fantasy books here for you on YouTube or Smashwords or Amazon.com, wherever you want to check them out. But today we're going to take a look at Tarzan number 29 from Marvel Comics. This is Sal Buscema and uh, <clears throat> P. Craig Russell, I want to say, I think. Let me double check that right now. Sal Buscema and P. Craig Russell on the pencils for this one with Bob Sherrick as the colorist. And here is the cover. Tarzan, we can tell what happens. These old covers are very much how to draw comics the Marvel way. This shows you what happens in this issue. Tarzan and his, uh, his family are shipwrecked <clears throat> while heading back to Africa. And... They don't miss a beat. The splash page, here it is. And I know there was a few ships called the Something Star. This is called the Star of Africa or the African Star. And I know there were ships called something like that, but I couldn't find any of them. I only did a really brief search on uh, DuckDuckGo because I hate using Google. The Google search results are massively screwed, you guys. You can't use it. You have to double check everything they tell you. Here we get another Sal Buscema awesome double page spread with four panels across the top. I love when he does these and there's usually one per book. So we got a splash page of what's going on now and then immediately double page spread back flashback backstory. <clears throat> How do you not love these guys? Sal and John Buscema are really, I, you know, I, I never got into Jack Kirby. I never did. But here we go. This is this is what comics are supposed to be. So Tarzan has rescued Jane, but they are now out at sea on a rowboat after their ship, the African Star, has sunk. And, oh, check this out. I want these 132-piece Roman soldiers. I love these a lot more than the... Uh, I would have loved Roman soldiers more than the, the army men, but I was a little too... My generation, I was too young for that. Those were the older kids, like the boomers had that kind of stuff. This is a boomer magazine. I was Gen X. So we were already on to G.I. Joe and Star Wars. Star Wars figures were even kind of old for us. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so this is the backstory where Tarzan meets Black Magic. At the uh, Black Magic is the Chicago gangster. He meets him down at the docks. And this is after he rescues Jane uh, with his son Korak from the Empire rooftop of the Empire State Building. And they discuss Roger Tory's fate. They board a ship with all the animals to go back to Africa. And all is right with the world, at least for leaving New York. And we get a Mike Metziker ad who really kind of pioneered negatives uh, working out. You guys should know what negatives are. And you should know how Mike Metzger's uh, workouts are different from like the Arnold Classic workouts. You guys should already know that shit. Here we go. Tarzan and Jane are uh, on the rowboat and they're discussing how they got to this situation. Here's where Tarzan is all dressed up like a regular person on the cruise ship. Sort of socializing with the people, with the, the civilians on uh, the, this transatlantic uh, voyage and something interesting happens so Tarzan says goodbye to Jane and Korak and he leaves her in the company of these other <clears throat> people trustworthy people uh, the ship's captain and so on and he goes <clears throat> down to the lower decks to check on the animals and have a conversation with them say hey how are you guys doing do you need anything they're like, it sucks down here. We want to go outside. He's like, you can't. You terrify everyone. It'll be chaos. We'll be home soon. And so as he's leaving, <clears throat> Tarzan is eavesdropping on one of the ship's, door, ship's cabin doors. Strangely enough, these rich people are down near the hold where the animals are. Their cabin would actually be way up high in the, uh, above the, above the, level the top level of the ship it would be i don't know what that's called i was in the marine corps not the navy so i don't know parts of the navy ship i did a couple floats but i don't remember and so 
Tarzan overhears Dick Dastardly here threatening these nobles. He has these letters and he's holding them hostage and he's going to ruin their lives. They have something he wants. I don't remember what. But Tarzan bursts into the room and seizes uh, the letters from Dick Dastardly and hands them off to the, the, the nobles. Count Vogel, I think is the guy's name. And then he stops him from shooting the gun and they have some back and forth where he accuses him of, you know, just being a, basically a crook and a criminal and tells him to leave these people alone. And then tells this count and countess to be more careful and that this isn't over, this guy will try again. He's not, you know, he isn't the sort of person to take no for an answer. This isn't over, be careful, be careful. And of course that's, this is the inciting incident for the comic. This is where the story starts. Tarzan intervenes to rescue a couple people who are being threatened. Up on the main decks, a costume party is going on. This is later. Tarzan has changed his clothes. Maybe later, a couple days later, maybe the same night, whatever. But he is now dressed in a white suit at a masquerade ball. Make sure I didn't skip a page here. So the masquerade ball, he recognizes this clown <clears throat> as the henchman of the Dick Dastardly character and that that clown is up to no good. And this clown then stabs the count who they were threatening earlier in the back with a dagger. And Tarzan leaves him to the other shocked guests and chases after the, uh, <clears throat> the murderer who is the henchman of Dick Dastardly in the top hat with the pencil thin criminal mustache. I don't get mustaches in general, but whatever. Um, I also don't get I also don't get grown men wearing shorts. I think that's why Uncle lost the Second World War because he was photographed in shorts, and the West said there's no way we're gonna let this guy beat us. <clears throat> so anyhow, Tarzan chases these guys down, confronts them, uh, you know, demands their surrender. Dick Dastardly literally throws a bunch of dynamite into the boilers for the ship and blows the ship up. Now, we had a problem yesterday where I wasn't holding this correctly for you guys, so I'm gonna flash back a couple pages and just make sure I've held this up nice and high. This first page is awesome. Do a quick review. Someone recommended the, uh, the John Carter, Princess of Mars, series which is done 77 79 it parallels this it's about 30 issues and so that i uh checked some of that out it's kind of pricey but we'll get it and we'll do that on this channel for sure so dick dastardly <clears throat> drops dynamite into the ship's boilers he himself falls in with it and dies and now tarzan and jane and the rest of the animals have to get off the ship before it sinks, along with everybody else. But Tarzan gets, makes sure Jane and his son Korak and the others are safe and gets them onto a lifeboat and demands that they save one for him, or he warns them anyhow, and says, save a lifeboat for me and the animals. So the animals that took two cargo planes to fly across the ocean are now going to make it... Uh, back to Africa in two lifeboats, right? The action makes the plot holes, it kind of justifies the plot holes, the action and the art. But, this is a Hulk Hostess comics, that's why I'm showing you that. Um, the action and the art, yes, they can, and I love how Sal Buscema is not crowding his last two pages like his brother does in the early Conan books a little bit. <laughs> where like a uh, whole bunch of story shit happens in the last five panels. But this is really good. We get a shot of Tarzan framed by fire. This is, I mean, this is all the action you can have on a cruise ship, right? Every, every, every TV trope you could have on a sinking cruise ship is right here for Tarzan. You've got a Dick Dastard, the character who sinks the boat. And the only thing you don't have is a U-boat and torpedoes and, you know, a standoff with other ships, but that's not, that's, this isn't, I suppose this isn't Battleship Potemkin, right? Or U571, whatever it was called. But Tarzan, last panel, 
Tarzan and his family see the actual cabin where his fa that his father built after being shipwrecked some 30 years before and, you know, 25, 30 years before. And Tarzan is home. He has done it. He has gotten his family home. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle, number 29, Marvel Comics, last Tarzan issue. It was good. It was a good run. Sal and John Buscema. P. Craig Russell, we had him on the, uh, one of the Elric books that we reviewed here. I only had book one, but it was a good book. It was well drawn. I really liked it. Uh, this is the Nine of Hearts, and I don't remember what it said, so I'm going to read it. This conflicted card is the Nine of Hearts, and I like this one. This one, uh, this one is this one allows for all of my prejudices about the end of the world. It says. Your bug out location is well off the beaten path, hard to find, and not easily stumbled upon by watch, wandering strangers, travelers, people out foraging. And But you feel that you should put up some other kind of barrier, not a physical barrier, but a psychological barrier. What kind of psychological barrier would you put up and why? Here's the thing about psychological barriers. To a smart person, it's not going to work. A smart person is just going to see a psychological, the only psychological barrier you can put up is a trap that someone else got caught in, but you're still showing people that you're there. Any psychological barrier you put up is an invitation. Think about this. You think you're going to be clever putting up dream, crack, dream catchers? If you put up anything except corpses, which are polluting your area, you're not going to have the effect that you want. And if you put up corpses, you're just going to show the real savages where you are. <clears throat> the greatest psychological barrier is no trace of, that you exist. If you have a mountaintop, stay on the mountaintop and don't go, below, don't go below a certain elevation. If you have water and you have everything you need, stay above a certain elevation. And then anyone who comes above that, that's, you know, I wouldn't put anything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give the slightest sign. The problem is, if you're at an elevation, you have to be very careful to dissipate your, your uh, cooking smoke because it will be seen for miles. If you cook at night, that can be seen for miles on the hillside. You have to cook in a <clears throat> dugout pit so the fire can't be seen. There's a lot of things you can do. Obviously, a mountaintop with running water is the ideal situation. Especially, I mean, that's where that's where everyone survived. Except, obviously, the Ice Age. Then you yeah, get pushed down in the warmlands. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. I'm just here to promote comics and fiction and <laughs> Legacy of Mad Scientist, Legend of Ashley Fox, Smashwords, Amazon, uh, here on YouTube. Also, thank you to all the fans of Michael Serion. Check out unslaved.com if you don't know who Michael Serion is. Um, anyone who's found my channel has probably done a search for Michael Serion, who is super cool and influenced a ton of my writing, just in that he influenced my the way I think about things and whatnot. And I do remember some of the guys that he talks about. This is our comic book, by the way. Uh, this is like this is <laughs> Ashley Fox Ninja Babysitter issue number six, Last Valkyrie. Uh, you can check it out. It's in the description too. One of uh, Michael Serion's great influences is Connor McDarry, who I want to read. He's written a bunch of stuff about Ireland. I am Irish. I am three quarters Irish, one quarter German. My grandma on my father's side is full-blooded German, but my grandfather and both my grandparents on my mom's side are Irish. So that's my family. And uh, yeah, um, the culture war has hit me pretty close to home, and I will never forgive the people responsible. All right, see you guys tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.